Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 145 where you send me your Flat Earth questions, or really any questions, to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, I got enough emails this week and enough long, interesting ones that I didn't want to crowd up strange worlds, so I'm just going to read some here, and we'll end with a back and forth with a hostile virus person. Normally, I would title the the email um, Flat Earth and Virus Q&A emails, but whatever. We're just going to go with this. So the first one is called Family Feud About Satellites. Hi, Mark. A funny Flat Earth story for you. I'd been battling with my family about Flat Earth for months, most recently over the non-existence of satellites. The argument went as they all do with them desperately trying to convince me satellites exist, then getting angry and storming off when I'd counterpoint. A couple weeks after that fight, I landed a job at a wireless internet provider that basically beams an internet connection to people's houses across rural Alberta, Canada. My family was ecstatic. I thought it was because I'd been unemployed for a while. Little did I know the reason for their joy tied into my flat earth beliefs. A few weeks after I'd finished my training, my mother started asking me about the new job, focusing on all these technical questions that were very out of character for her. After a few minutes of me explaining how it all works, she casually asked how the satellites fit in, and I had to reply, well, they don't. It's all done through underground cables and radio towers. As I watched her shoulders slump in defeat, I realized what was happening. This job was supposed to be the silver bullet that would put to rest my delusion about satellites, and when I told her we didn't use any, she was crushed. Because now, what would my family do to win me back to the globe camp? The punchline is three months later, my company was acquired by a larger company that provides wireless internet service across the entire length of Canada. And there still isn't one single satellite involved. Stay fat, flat, James. Yes, thank you, James, for that. And yeah, absolutely right. Uh, you can look it up. I've got, you can go to my channel and it's either under observations or tests or odds and ends. And I've got several satellite videos. Uh, NASA, as some people know, but most people don't, is the largest consumer of helium in the world. They can launch helium balloons and tied to satellites up to four tons, which is 8,000 pounds, some wonderful crashes, by the way, if you want to look at some some great videos there. And they've been doing this since the 1950s. Not a big secret. Uh, It's called the High Altitude Balloon Program, and NASA has been doing it for decades and decades. So anyway, thank you, James, very much for that. And I sent him some uh, some links to some videos in my channel about that. Next one is called About Me. Good afternoon, Mark. I just wanted to share my story with you. I have been wanting to tell more people about me and my journey with FE, but due to several factors, I can't. I started my conspiracy journey listening to my parents talking about Ruby Ridge, Waco, and the Oklahoma City bombing. I personally looked into the TWA Flight 800 explosion when I was 14. Good reference, by the way. Very few people even know about TWA 800. I've looked into lots of conspiracies since then. I joined the Navy summer of 2001. I was in training during 9-11. I was a gas turbine systems mechanical third class when I got out. Fancy name for being a mechanic. I served on a LCAC, Naval Hovercraft, and part of doing so meant I was cross-training as a lookout, engineer, and navigator. I was able to watch the radar ping targets, other ships, at distances of over 20 miles using low-tech radars. I was also able to get into areas of the big ships and see the ship's radar hitting other ships at over 100 miles. Didn't think much of it at the time, but now I know that was way too far. The LCAC radar at 20 miles was only about 20 feet up, so the horizon distance should have been 5.5 miles. Side note, during my time in the Navy, I was privy to some ship movement information And with this, I can refute some of the things told to you by the missile systems instructor. Sorry, I forgot his name. Nothing crucial, but I can explain why ships move faster going west than east. Hmm, Okay. 
I saw a meme in 2015 about Flat Earth, and after looking into every other conspiracy, I thought, hmm, okay, that's possible, I guess. I had a family tragedy in 2015 when I lost, I'm oh, sorry, 2016, when I lost three of my kids in a fire. I didn't think about FE for nearly a year after that. My family was in the public light locally for a long time, and we still partially are. My mom, I'm sorry, my wife is on staff at our church and things I would say reflect on her and our church so I am limited on what I can publicly say. My wife is not a FE believer. This past spring, I started a new career as a shop teacher. So again, to keep my career, I have to be careful of what I say and do. As a teacher, I have a unique position to be able to teach the kids to think for themselves. I am constantly dropping hints and clues on the true nature of our world. Feel free to share my story if you want. If not, that's fine too. I would love to hear your thoughts on TWA Flight 800. Thanks and stay flat, Chris. And I won't give out his last name. Uh, yeah, uh, TWA Flight 800. Why, look, it's one of those weird things where a plane goes down, a big one, right after takeoff. And there have been rumors swirling around this thing for years and years and years. I think it is probably a simple case of espionage versus counter espionage, meaning if something's on the plane, it's not like the movies. If something's on the plane and this is a threat, this, either it was blown up by somebody on the plane or you were blowing it up because there was something on the plane you wanted to blow up along with the people. There, you absolutely can put a price on human life. It's done in, in the spy game all day long. And that's what I think happened. I think my, my guess is either it was a terrorist act that they didn't want to publicly make light of you know i've heard stories you know that there was a missile coming up from a boat down below the question is who who shot the missile you know if you're going to go with the missile theory was it shot by um uh somebody you know they were trying to you know terrorists trying to take out the plane and damage america and then we downplayed it we just didn't tell the media or did we shoot it down ourselves because there was somebody on the plane or a big threat that we wanted to get rid of Hard to say. I, I could go either way on that. Uh, what I felt bad was is that Boeing uh, got blamed for it. You know, it's like, oh, a mechanical problem. Oh, Boeing was so upset about that. You know, the plane takes off and just explodes, you know, only a few minutes after takeoff. How often does that happen? Not very. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. This one's called vaccine follow-up. So. So I was thinking today, didn't say Mark, but we'll just say, assume he was saying Mark. So Mark, I was thinking today, wouldn't it be something if a group, political Democrats, Joe Biden, or elite, the World Economic Forum slash Joe Biden is a speaker there and they have been planning the Great Reset for some time now, got together and came up with this incredible plan. X amount of people die from various flu-like infections every year. Why don't we bring out this coronavirus? Think Plutoxin 7 virus from the movie Escape from New York with Kirk Russell. Wow, there's an old reference going all the way back to the early 80s. Um, that we had on our back burner for over 30 years now. It's serious, but not for 99% of the population. We go forward with our plans of global shutdown because we want to scare the bejesus out of everyone. We have to crash the current world economy. We want a global one world economy and government anyway. We come up with a vaccine that's incredibly effective. In fact, unbelievably effective, 95%. We continue adding up and broadcasting daily death counts, which most of the population has no initiative to check the math and see the deaths are far under 1%. We pound on the totals daily so that the populace thinks that 1.3 million deaths are viewed as 13 million deaths. And I've done a rant on that. He's absolutely right. Now, here's the total genius part. You take the vaccine, that could be sugar water for all we know, and make it mandatory. Keep in mind that if we don't take the vaccine, we have a 99% survival rate. So now the tallies come in and wow, our vaccine is more effective than we thought. It's not 95% effective, it's 99% effective. A true miracle. Now we can all come together and build a one world economy and build a better world together. This would now be the time to introduce the alien contact you've talked about. Sign extra crap. Uh, yeah, extra crap. Yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting. Very, very possible. All the stuff you put in there, no big secret. The, it's, it's stunning to me that even now the general public thinks that at least 10 times more people have died than have actually died. 
I, d I don't know how they got that across. I mean, seriously, if there were 13 million people already dead in the world, it would be stunning. I, you know, I've, I've always been a critic of, well, we'll get to the other stuff later. Anyway, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Let's move on to the next one. We only have a few this time. I just want to, uh, but the, the last, I'm saving the best for last. Uh, this one's called Just a Brief Note, Mark. For the second time, it's just a mask came to me through the net. The first time, I was just too busy to look at it, and unwatched, it quietly was set aside somewhere. As things go, a very longtime friend just sent it to me again, and this time I watched it. Every second, every word, twice. Somehow, it gets across my exact feelings, actions, and ways of seeing things, and I want to simply thank you for making it. Wherever you are, and whatever you do, please rest assured that you have a grateful follower. That's from Joe, a 40-year United States Air Force Tech Sergeant vet. He's 74 years old now. Never worn a mask, nor caught the ghoulie womps. Oh, I get it. Oh, Julie womps. Got it. Nor bent to anyone who tried to subjugate my will. Yeah, thanks, Joe. And if people, you don't know what I'm talking about. I did a narrative uh, of a inspired by a letter sent by a woman to a senator, I believe, and it was called Just a Mask. And uh, because the, the one that you see floating out there was done in a high-pitched Joker voice. And so I decided to take it and kind of make it my own and, and change it around and massage the, the dialogue a little bit. And I put it out there and it got a lot of traction, surprising amount of traction, because a lot of the verbiage is not, I mean, I would have, if I had to rewrite it, I would have written it differently uh, in terms of how it was portrayed, but it got a lot of traction and spun around in a lot of different circles and hey, glad it got out there and glad it resonated. However, now we're going to get to the, the, the big one here, which is... Um, Somebody else responded to Just a Mask within a day of that one and was not as happy. So the video, I'm sorry, the, uh, the email that was initially sent to me was called uh, Just Watched Your Video. And it goes a little something like this. I have never written to a fellow content creator with such anger, but here I am. I just watched your horrible mask video. She's talking about it's just a mask. Just let you know who I am. I am someone that has just spent six weeks working on a project that allowed me to have the amazing opportunity to talk to top RTs and doctors around the country and a few outside of it. People with no political agenda. People. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, who are at the top of their fields, training others to deal with the insanity called COVID. No, Mark, I am not a mindless drone. I am an intelligent woman. She didn't use plural, but that's fine. I know she's really, really upset. Who understands we are dealing with something we have never seen before. A virus that all these months later is still very much a mystery to the world. Why do some people get it and have no symptoms while others die? Masks, dot, 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 help. Are they 100%? No. But this BS video that I have only no seen, I know she meant now, now, now I'm saying, claiming masks are about the government control is absolute insanity. If you don't believe COVID is real, um, I want you to go now, yes, right now, Mark, and walk into one of the many ICUs filled at capacity and do it without a mask. Happy to. <laughs> I've been, I did a conference of 400 something people. Nobody wore masks whatsoever. Uh, I am happy to arrange that. Just tell me what city you are in and I will find the nearest ICU that is at capacity. So you can get me into an ICU. You can make some phone calls. Somehow I doubt that. Uh, truth, all caps. Assholes like you are why we can't this, get this virus under control. Mm -hmm. It's not about political anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Or government control. It's about humanity, all bold, but no caps. It's about trying to be as safe as we can while dealing with a monster we have never encountered. I mean, like the Spanish flu, which we did encounter? It's fine. Uh, I am a 54-year-old woman who happens to be asthmatic, and sadly, I don't have great lungs. I know if I get it, odds are I won't survive it. Sorry to hear that. But yeah, you probably shouldn't be catching anything if you have uh, asthma. I wear a mask. I social distance and follow all the advice those in the know have given. You mean mainstream media? Mm -hmm. 
I do it because it's the right thing to do to keep myself and others safe. No, you're doing it because the TV told you to, or in this case, maybe your phone. I watched your terrible video and I wanted to scream. Find your humanity. Stop the insanity. Research. Talk to those who have no political agenda and you will see who has no political agenda. <laughs> Everyone has a political agenda. And you will see just how real COVID is and why, all caps, we must do all we can. That includes wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. And if you are really, truly not going to wear a mask, please sign a waiver. I will even create one for you that states if, God forbid, you do indeed get COVID and need medical assistance, you will decline, all caps, it because you didn't wear a mask and put yourself at risk. And again, the conference. Are you willing to do that? If you think masks are BS then be prepared to die if you get COVID <laughs> because I will be the one at the hospital begging them not to help you. Somehow I doubt that uh, to let you reap what you have sown. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, sowing flat earth for five years. So there's that. I don't think she even knows that yet. I will be most interested to see if you have the balls to respond to this. People like you are the problem. Signed, Susie. I don't have a last name for Susie. Otherwise, I'd probably give it out. But I did respond, and I'm going to read to you now uh, my response. You ready? Dear Susie, thank you for your interesting but not very inspiring letter. I'll address a few points, then leave you to your hysteria. There is a simple question I have asked on air in different rants and interviews. Not one health professional has even come close to addressing it. The question is this. Why is smoking banned on airplanes? It's because the airplane filters can't stop secondhand smoke. Even our lungs, all caps, can't stop secondhand smoke, hence the massive lawsuits. That's a problem because smoke particles are 80 to 100 times larger than virus particles. Science made the charts, not me. If the virus can circulate through an entire airplane in under two minutes, recirculated air, then why are all the airports still open? In fact, find me an airport that ever closed. I myself, just last month, flew four flights through three different airports in as many states. There was no testing, no screening, no questions. People took off their masks in the airport bars, restaurants, and bathrooms. Bathrooms was weird going into a bathroom and any every guy that walked in the bathroom just took off their mask immediately probably because they knew nobody was watching them the airlines even added more flights for the holidays i just read an article about it huge amounts of people were flying not 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 nearly as many as last year but still a bunch they were ignoring it but in some aspects you are right i believe that there is more to this virus than meets the eye. And yes, I and all of my friends think that something sinister is afoot. The short version is that we were oversold a crisis that never manifested. In February, look it up, we were told that the general population could expect a 1% death rate and seniors could expect 3%. That's over 3 million people in the US alone, dead, minimum. Never happened. It's almost December. Where are we? 250,000? Sorry, not enough. Not even close. The virus is too slow, too weak, and you absolutely can put a cost on human life. Destroying a multi-trillion dollar economy for victims who were all senior citizens with underlying conditions? <laughs> Please. Find me a bunch of 35-year-old joggers who caught it and then dropped dead two weeks later. Oh, right. They don't exist. And yes, I would be happy to sign any waiver you create. The last thing I would ever do is take the most rushed vaccine in history. I believe in the MMR cover-up, and most importantly, I believe that any vaccine tied to the financial system is a massive red flag for the Christian community. That's Revelation 13 and 14, if you care. So please, send whatever you want. I'll sign, scan, and return. This is a world of deception. You know there are lies all around you in every aspect. The difference between you and me is that you choose not to look at them. I leave you with two statements. See if you can reconcile them. Everything on CNN 
is absolutely true. And everything on Fox is absolutely true. See? There is such a thing as fake news. Mark Sargent. And there you go. Please send your interesting emails, or if you're a troll, you want to give me a hard time, send those too. And uh, I'll see you next time, guys.